Welcome to our online worship service from Grace Lutheran Church, Hastings, Michigan. It is good for you to come this fourth Sunday of Advent to know God's very presence among us. Today we hear the words of a gospel that doesn't share Christ's revealed presence in the way that we think would normally be happening. There's so surprises there from Matthew, and we know that it is true. God is with us each and every day. We thank you that we can know the presence and love of God each step of the way. We are thankful for those who have contributed to our Replace, Repair, Renew campaign. We have a surplus of $1 right now, this very moment. So we're thankful for your generosity and gaining money to pay toward a new HVAC. We will be discerning what our next capital campaign phase will be and how it will be enacted at the next council meeting. So look for more details to come. Christmas adopt a family and Christmas food baskets. Wow! the outrageous generosity of this congregation and the love that we have. Just so you know, we are able to not only do the five families that we were tasked to do and committed to do, again, with the generosity of people giving money, there was another family that came forward and we're going to be able to share um, dollars and um, buying gifts and baskets for them too. Um, so what a gift it is for us to uh, fill the crack because they made just a little bit too much money um, but not enough to receive uh, a Christmas that is probably worthy. So we're thankful that we have generous people. Our nursery attendant is Aurora and we're glad that she is here with us and part of our life. May you come and visit her and bring children to her care. Lake Area Choral Society concert is today at Lakewood High School at 3 p.m. Our giving tree is up. It's still going to accept gifts until January 5th, 2023. So we hope that you can now focus on helping with that. Christmas Eve service begins at 5.30 on Saturday, December 24th, with one Christmas Day service at 10 a.m. and one New Year's Day service at 10 a.m. So we hope that you're able to come for those times of worship and praise. May we know God's love and glory in our life as we worship God this day. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she was born a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
My friends, I come all the way up here partly to show the whole scene. I don't think you've seen the Advent wreath at all as I look at the videotapes for this week. But I also realize that we're here to witness what happened in the background. Behind the cross, that blue has risen and risen and risen and risen. And now the very top, we see just a little bit because the arrival in Advent is almost over. The arrival is almost here. The advent of waiting, longing, and expecting is almost over. But we know the reality. God is here with us. Jesus is with us through the Holy Spirit. And we know that little by little, if we allow God to creep in our lives, we will see that grace, that love. May we always open ourselves up to Jesus and see Jesus coming in new ways where we can do what we call often God's sightings, to see the good news of God's work in our lives. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us always to see your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next week. Grace be with you from God, who gives us the gift to ponder our Savior's birth and savor the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. Amen. When Christians pondered the last leg of Advent and the arrival at Christmas, we generally emphasized the risk, fragility, and high hopes surrounding Jesus' conception and birth, which lends so much to our sense of what Christmas is about and how the Messiah's Advent tell us a marvelous story. Matthew shines a light on Joseph's very shady attempt to be righteous, and we're left to chew on a hundred questions about whether anyone has any idea about what God is up to and the incredible arrival of a child who will somehow save his people from their sins. Matthew makes a nativity story almost entirely about divine initiative. There's no significant attention given to faith for a human emotion, virtue, a human's awareness of the presence of God, consent or joy or even wonder by humans. There are no songs. Matthew's narrative greets us as a gospel of discovery and inbreaking. Those aspects don't rule out the possibility that the story's human characters are churning with expectation, imagination, and insight, but Matthew makes no effort to reveal those things. Instead, Matthew tells a story about how God is doing and will yet do, whether or not anyone recognizes it for what it is. Did you even notice at the end of our gospel reading for today that Jesus is born and named? Jesus and our gospel writer for today didn't even tell us where Jesus was born. Matthew implies that God will take care of all things in the time God will take care of all things. That is the meaning of the Messiah and is revealed more quietly. Matthew asks us to proceed more slowly with much less knowledge as we walk each step and experience God's work of salvation that is being unraveled and revealed before our very eyes. In a nutshell, Matthew's message for us at this point in time, on this fourth Sunday in Advent, this Sunday before Christmas, before we go to the manger in a cave and hear the angels' songs in the field, revealed in the most basic ways. What's all this about? It's simple. Watch what happens. Pay attention. 
I don't really have the luxury of offering such a brief message as that. Watch what happens, pay attention, and then just sit down. Maybe some of you want me to stop and sit down right now. <laughs> Most likely. But think about it. Matthew calls us to stretch the coming of God into our lives. Watch what happens. Pay attention to the things that are going on with God in mind for our lives. Do we see the ways God's weird inbreaking continuing among us? Do we see God in the obscure circumstances of life? Watch what happens. Pay attention. I saw the inbreaking of God the other day in a hospital room where someone giggled with hope and gave a laughter of joy. I saw salvation taking place as a horrible situation of abuse which had taken place is now in the healing process and wholeness has been given. I was encouraged to watch and see the grace of God's action before we worry about responding or contemplating. Watch what happens. Pay attention. It's hard to wait, but God is fulfilling what needs to happen. Our gospel invites us all to pause at the wonder and the refreshment that the Christmas story brings. The story of Jesus reminds each of us that the prospect of God is with us, resounds with comfort and joy. But yet we also know that God's arrival will threaten more norms than Joseph ever imagined. And when norms of life are threatened, the people who are regularly harmed by them can expect more discomfort and peril to fall on them. Watch what happens. Pay attention. Finally, my friends in Christ, don't forget to realize that Emmanuel, God is with us, is for us too. Not just those who are on the fringe, not just for those who are poor. We give God our worship because love was first given to each of us. We are grateful for the gift of having each other that we can be in relationship with each other because of God's action for each and every one of us. We can see, we can watch, we can participate in God's strange commitment to this stubborn world and see lives change. Watch what happens. Pay attention. Let us be exposed to the grace that is given us by sharing it with each other to realize the spoken words of the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. With this, we can watch what happens and pay attention to God's salvation for us all. Amen.